Hi, I'm Al McRobbie at Saley Company, and welcome to our video on RF isolation. Uh, you may be aware that Salig has a number of manufacturers for RF isolation products. And the, the product ranges from all uh, devices or, or RF enclosures that can be made large enough to drive a 10-ton truck into, all the way down to small pouches that are the size for a, for a cell phone. And what we have today is a, a product called a Selecta Shield from Select Fabricators. And this is the model WPT-1010, and it's, it's roughly uh, a 12 inch by 7 inch by 10 inch type of enclosure. And the outer part of the enclosure is made of this um, Nova Select fabric, which is actually a, a blend of silver, copper, and nickel fibers uh, to create the shielding enclosure. And you can see it's flexible and very lightweight. And it's supported internally by an RF absorbent flexible um, foam shield inside here that goes around uh, four of the six sides. Uh, it has a panel, as you can see here, which can be outfitted with different kinds of connectors if you need some input output on, on this device. Okay, so what we're, what we're going to do is just do a quick test of the uh, general RF isolation of this product and see how well it performs. And for doing that, we're, we're using as an RF source inside the box, we're using another device here from Winfreak Technologies in Florida. And they make a, a product here called the Synth NV. And it's a, it's a very useful little device for generating RF, um, both uh, a carrier wave or a um, unmodulated wave and also modulated waves. And it has non-volatile memory in it. So we can set the frequency and the level that we want and apply power to the thing, stick it inside our box here and use it as an RF source radiating within this enclosure. And another manufacturer that is getting involved in this also is the antenna, a very useful and essential part made by embedded antenna design in England. This is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna that has a, a knuckle joint in it so it can be raised in this position that, like it is here. Um, it, it also can you know, be folded down back that way too. So we've, we've set this unit here for a 2.4 gigahertz uh, carrier wave. Now, you, you're aware also probably that we saw a number of different spectrum analyzers and we have a couple of the 3.2 gigahertz models here, one from Regal and the other from Sigland, and these are both good benchtop units. It's beyond the scope of this video for me to go into a lot of features on either one of them, but they're very similar in performance and, and so on. So just look for whichever one is on sale. And um, they both have three-year warranties, and they're both supported here in the United States. So either one of these is a good choice to get yourself started with spectrum analysis on your bench. And so um, what we are going to do now is, is go over into uh, the, another area in our facility here where we have a turntable. We're going to set this whole thing up so that it can be rotated through a full 360 degrees, both uh, just the source by itself and then the source within this enclosure. And then we're going to do a couple of polar plots and see what the RF isolation of the WPT 1010 actually is. All right, so that'll be the next step that we do. What we have here is the RF source on the turntable. You can see every few seconds or so it's stepping about nine degrees and it's going to continue to do that all the way around until it reaches 360 and then it'll stop. The, the reason we're doing this is that we need to um, establish a reference level for the RF source when it's not in the box. So we have the uh, Winfreak uh, 2.4 gigahertz transmitters here sitting on a pair of nine volt batteries that are providing power for it. The receiving antenna is the um, 10 dBi Yagi that we have which is off camera but it's, to the, it's to, off to our right here. So uh, what we're gonna be doing is again to develop this polar plot we're going to be stepping this around um, nine degrees until the whole thing accomplishes 360. Then we're going to put it inside the enclosure. 
Okay, now we're seeing the RF enclosure itself and the RF source that we had measured earlier for the reference level is now inside this box. And we're stepping through the same 9 degrees all the way around for a full 360. And we're using the same equipment positioned in the same exact way as previously to determine what the response is um, that we get from the RF source as it's trying to uh, pass through the enclosure. So from this we will get two plots on our polar plot. One is the reference level and the second one is the enclosure. And then we'll do the math simply to subtract two levels and then come up with the degree of isolation, which we'll see in a few minutes. Okay, so here's the polar graph or the polar plot. And around the circumference of the thing you can see our reference level. And the reference level is somewhere between minus 5 and minus 10 dBm all the way around the thing. Okay, and now in the very center of the graph you'll see a red trace. And that refers to um, the levels that we received through the Yagi antenna um, from going, you know, the RF passing through the enclosure. So these are the levels we got there. The green trace is actually the resulting trace, and that's the uh, isolation. That's a calculated set of values there. And that shows you what basically the isolation is that we're able to achieve with this, with this uh, enclosure. Um, remember I, I mentioned in the other portion of this video that zero degrees corresponds to the side of the enclosure that has that plate on it where there was a USB and an SMA connector. So that's, that's your zero degree reference. On the other side of the, of the enclosure is the Velcro seam that opens up so you can put things inside it. So the, the Velcro is metallized with a similar treatment as the regular uh, Nova Select fabric is. Um, however, you can see that there is a little bit more leakage uh, through the Velcro side. Now at 90 and, and uh, 270 degrees, these are the actual sides of the unit and the RF has to pass through the RF absorbent structure that maintains the shape of the box. So there actually is more attenuation on the sides than there is on either the front or the back of the unit. If you can you know, refer to 0 and 180 as the front and the back. So that's my explanation for the thing. Um, for, for why the, the graph is the shape that it is. So um, if you have any questions about it, you know, feel free to give me a call and we can discuss further. All right, thanks. Okay, so we're back and you've seen the graphs that we made and hopefully the explanation uh, is understandable. If you have any questions about it, of course, or any of these products that were involved in this, um, you know, give me a call. I want to point out, just in case you missed it, that that this side of this uh, enclosure with this panel in the front of it is corresponds to zero degrees on the polar plots. Uh, another thing that we we used as a receiving antenna, we had a a, a Yagi that is a 2.4 gigahertz design, and it's approximately uh, plus 10 dBi. Just in, just so you know. Um, on that. So that was the, the other end of this link. This is the transmitting antenna, of course. So anyway, again, uh, give me a call. The, the information's on the screen. So uh, again, thanks for watching.